Hello, my name is Ed. I'm joined by Amy. We are actually recording this. So uh, if you or anyone else want to watch back on YouTube within about 48 hours, it will be available on our channel. We always recommend you can watch it on double speed because firstly, it's funny. And secondly, you can jump to the bits you really want to see. And you could recommend to people the bits they've missed that are worth seeing. And you can say, with our permission, if Ed and Amy are talking, just jump straight through. But we're going to try to be informative, helpful and constructive. Uh, we are looking today at partnering with parents. It's a topic we do often, but there is a, there is a secret reason that I suspect is not a secret to you, that uh, we do have a book we've put out which we believe could be the best tool you'll need for partnering with parents. We are biased, but maybe some of you have received a copy, maybe you've read a copy. We, we could do, we could do emojis. Let's do a reaction for, uh, okay, let's do some reactions. Okay, so on reactions, um, if it's a surprise to you that we've got a book, you can do the face. If you've started reading it, you can do that. And if you've finished it, you can do either the love heart, if you love it, or the crying for somewhere mediocre. Okay, so look, here we go. What was say? I've already forgotten what they were. Was, was thumbs up started it, Amy? Yeah, thumbs up was started it. Okay, keep that up. Yeah, good. I'm having a lockdown flashbacks here, Ed. But anyway, it's okay. Okay, okay, good. And then the was I didn't know we had a book at all. Great, this is good. Let me just let, keep, keep going. Press it again, there, there, that's good. Press it oh, again, good. press it again. He's, he didn't see. Press it again, we're checking, we're He's checking. He's got to scroll through the screens. <laughs> this is more fun than I've had in a long time. <laughs> oh, look, thank you. Look, this is wonderful. Okay, look, there are, some, there are thumbs going up. Keep going, one more go, one more go. Thumbs are going up for people have started it. Some people are going to the gym, which is excellent. Thanks, Beth. It's okay, Beth. Don't be embarrassed. It's all good, Beth. There's no one can get something wrong. And we've got some clapping. I, honestly, I, good. Well done. Well done. That was excellent. Uh, let me tell you what's going to happen. Uh, we, we are here for something like two and a half hours. It's going to be an absolute break to run to the loo and to get a cup of tea. We're going to have some breakout group times. I'm delighted some of you are already in a breakout group. You're sat with someone else there. When you get to a breakout group, it's not rude to, um, to turn off your microphone and camera and just have a chat in the room you're in. We're just delighted you're having a conversation. For the rest of us, we can chat in our breakout groups. We're gonna have three of those. Uh, well, they're not going to be recorded. So you could talk confidentially to one another. <laughs> <laughs> which in itself would be exciting. Uh, the chat is alive and well. No one is surprised by the chat. Please put in there your questions, your links of interest. We're going to record the chat and edit out the hello, I'm in Solly Hole, and just put in there the chat. So if someone puts in there a pearl of wisdom that is so genius, you find yourself typing or copying or cut and pasting it, don't worry, we're going to send that to you afterwards. Uh, so afterwards, you'll be able to get the YouTube, you'll be able to get the chat. We're going to email that to you all afterwards and any links we go through. Uh, I believe that is all the introductions we need. So uh, questions can start now. So any questions that pop in, uh, we have Janice doing the tech for us as part of our team. And we have uh, Amy and I trying to, um, to help you out. So between the three of us, we'll try to put answers in the chat if, uh, if that can help. Uh, Amy, will you unmute and pray for us? I'd love to. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you for uh, the good news that, that we know. We thank you for a saviour that loves us. We thank you for a saviour that is for us. We thank you that we don't need to be the Messiah because we have one. I pray that you would help us to, um, to grow in confidence of pointing those in our lives that you've given us responsibility or to him and show them what needing Jesus looks like. Amen. 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 Now, we don't need the commentary. It's impossible not to talk it out loud. Uh, we are looking at partnering with parents, raising confident kids. And uh, 
I just wanted to tell you briefly a story that um, I have found significant, which is I am used to doing a youth group camp every year. Uh, where as part of that, I get given a group of young people, uh, maybe six, seven, eight, with a couple of other leaders. Some of them might be from my church, some of them might not. And whether they're from my church or not, I do try by about day two or three to have had the chance over conversation to have asked them, uh, are you a Christian? Uh, because I think it's helpful to know if the goal of a, a camp is, can we encourage them on to one next step closer to Jesus? That can be helpful. I'm struck that in that uh, there is an answer I get more than any other. And the answer I get more than any other is not yes or no. The answer I get more than any other is I'm trying. I am trying to be a Christian. The Bible doesn't give that as an answer. The Bible speaks of identity rather than effort. I'm trying shows that the young people believe it's about them and it's about their effort. In uh, 1 John 3, we read this. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Amy loves this verse because there's two exclamation marks in it. And Amy wonders what an exclamation mark is in ancient Greek. I think it's the only verse of the Bible that has two exclamation marks because it's exciting. It's the most exciting verse in the Bible. The Father has so loved us that we should be called children of God. To be a child of God is not about effort. In the same way, if I went to, uh, to tuck my kids into bed at night and said to them, are you my child? It would be very surprising if they said, I'm trying. If I said to them, do you think you've managed to achieve being my children today? It would be surprising if they, it would be a surprising question. In the same way, the Bible's language for us is always identity. The name God gives himself most often in the New Testament is our father. That is, he has given us that word because that's how identity works. Father, child is the language of identity. It's who we are. It's not what we have done. It's not have we earned it. Uh, Amy is in the room. So uh, I think I have her permission to tell this story because it's in the book. But uh, Amy went uh, with her children to court. Uh, and it's a story I loved hearing where she adopted her four children. She went from no children to four children inside a two year period. And she had four children under four. That makes her extraordinary on many levels. But there was a day she went to court and the judge was a very smart guy. And he let the kids climb over the wood paneled edging. He let them try on his wig and he let them bang the gavel and he let them have selfies with him and he let them see him sign documents and he gave them laminated versions. He went to a great deal of trouble to ensure they remembered that day forever because that was the day the children legally became Smiths. That was the day legally they were Amy and her husband Steve's children. It's smart of the judge because he knows there'll be days coming when the questions get asked Am I your child? Have I done enough to be your child? Why am I your child and how did that happen? What the judge knew is they had to be able to say, it is definitely true, we're your children. Whatever questions may come next. That is the story of being children. And there they are. It is identity. And we want our children to know that. 1 John 3, 2, the very next verse says, Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Uh, we're in the middle of recording a mini series of podcasts about autism. And I heard a story about a family with an autistic child 
who took him to a church and it was an impressive church and it was a big church and there was a part of the church where the public weren't allowed to go and there was a huge plate glass wall at one end of the building that separated the church from a stained glass window and a place they weren't allowed to go and the child with autism uh, got to this plate glass window and absolutely melted down screamed and shouted and they and he said this is a bad building i don't want to stay in here and they, they took him out and they had no idea what was happening and before they went home because he was so upset he said to them i want to explain why this is a bad building and he took them back in and he, they said he was visibly unsettled and scared he took them back in and he took them to the plate glass window and said they're stopping me from going to Jesus. And then they had it explained and they left. He had an absolutely innate understanding that he wanted to be with Jesus. And he understood that's what happened in churches. And he wanted to be with Jesus. He was in a Christian family. And his response, perhaps as a result of autism, is more extreme, but it is an emotive response that we would all love to have to some degree as we wait to see Jesus Christ, as we wait to be with him in the new creation. We know when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We'll see Jesus Christ. And in that flash, we will be like him. It's identity language. Who are you? I'm like him. I'm not behaving more like him. I'm not growing to be like him. I'm not doing my best to be like him. I will be like him. So do you see that that means we are, we are in the middle between we have become children of God, not by what we have done, and we'll be like him. We are in the in-between. And in the in-between, we are brothers and sisters. This session today, I want us to be clear, as we talk about parents, and as we talk about children in our church families, we are talking about our brothers and sisters. And we, in this, in this session, are brothers and sisters. We are talking about being in the family of God between the day we have become Christians and the day we'll be with Jesus. So I want us to get that what partnership with parents means is simply saying, I am your brother. I am your sister. And if your children are trusting in Jesus, as we pray, they either have already decided or they will. You are going to be their brother or sister. To be a parent is to pray for the day that when we'll be like Jesus, we'll be stood next to our children as a brother or a sister. That's the goal of parenting. To pray for our children that they have become our brother and sister. So partnership with parents, I think, because the language of identity means it's very helpful if we keep our minds set on, I am ministering to my brothers and sisters. And the parents are just simply the big brothers and sisters of the children. And I am just another big brother or sister of the children. I think that keeps our hearts in the right place. It might just turn to rubble some of the barriers that exist. And it might also be a work we do with parents to help them understand that's where we're coming from, which I believe is a place of safety and confidence. Let me pray. Dear Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that the status we enjoy is given to us. There was a time, a moment in history when it was achieved. As Christ died, we were brought into a family. And I thank you, there will be a moment in history where that work will be complete. We will be like him. We will have a new identity. Father, as we enjoy this time between, as we live out the life of being children of God, I do pray, Father, firstly for our hearts, that they be shaped by identity, which means assurance which means confidence, which means certainty. And that would be the shape of our ministry. That we would minister to our little brothers and sisters and our big brothers and sisters. Amen.
I have a straw poll for you. The joy of straw polls is um, they might just uh, work out where our thinking is at as we start a session. So um, if Janice, when you're ready, you want to pop up the straw poll, there we go. So uh, there's only two questions. Uh, the first one is I'm here today because. Uh, so this is this is helpful for us. I want to understand what partnering for parents is. I want to understand more about identity. Parents want help with those difficult topics and I'm here for them. I want to know how to use this book, Raising Confident Kids with Parents. I come to everything Faith in Kids does and I'm only marginally interested in what it's about. Or I was told to come by someone who loves me very much. Uh, and if there's more than one of you in the room, you can fight to get to the screen quickly enough. Uh, and then the second question is how I feel about partnering with parents. So uh, what is our sort of innate response? It's totally anonymous. All we'll get is a number on a screen. I think we'll all be interested in the answer. Do I feel confident? I, I'm enjoying it. I just want some more ideas. I want to do it better. I'm calm. I'm getting on with it. Let's see how it goes. I'm frustrated. I'm trying, but it's so hard to see progress. I'm nervous. I know I should be doing it. I'm finding it really hard. I'm intimidated. How, why would it ever be me? Okay, so you stick in an answer. You stick in an answer. You press submit. Uh, and then we, I think at some point then something magical happens when, um, Janice, is there a button you press to make us see the results when it comes? Okay, off we go. So if everyone has pressed submit, now comes the magic. Deep breath, please. Would you like to see my uh, notes, Ed, from your first session? Here we go. <laughs> Amy, hang on, I'll make your what screen bigger. Know. I think I can make your screen bigger. Does that make it bigger for everyone? Who knows? Who knows? I think it does. Okay, here we go. That's all you need to know. What did you say all those words for? You only need them pictures. Tell us your three pictures, Amy. We've got we've got the kid thinking, um, am I a Christian? I'm trying. And then we've got the good news that there's an exclamation mark in the Bible that tells him who he is. God's child. And then we've got our little arrow down here. We're brothers and sisters. We've got a better story. We're brothers and sisters together working out the good news that one, way, one day we will be like our big brother Jesus. It's good news. And there's luck. That's where we got it from. Ed didn't make it up. Very good. Janice, if it's not popped up, does that mean we're having a problem or you're waiting for it? No, it's there. Up. Thank you so much, Janice. There we go. Then. So, so the conclusions we draw is I want to understand what partnering with parents is, is top. Is, uh, is there three top answers? Parents want help with those difficult topics. We're going to talk a bit later about gender and sexuality. And I want to know how to use a book. So there we go. Look, we really help hope the three of you, three of you, the three, we can help on those three areas. And how are we feeling? The top answer is calm. Yes, that's a good top answer. Second answer is nervous. I know what I should be doing, but where do I start? Goodness, I hope we can help. But you do get to tell us at the end if we have helped with that or not. And there is a good proportion of us who are intimidated, and we know that. And Amy is going to be helping us with that just on the other side of a, uh, a breakout group. OK, very good. So we thank you for doing that. We are going to now go to a breakout group, uh, five or six of you. Uh, I think there is obvious two things you could obviously talk about. One is, who are you? Where are you? How are you? And secondly, uh, have you come with a particular goal in mind? Why don't you share that with your breakout group? We're going to stay with the same breakout groups throughout. So if you tell them what the goal in mind is, you might be able to pick that conversation up as we go through. OK, who are you? Where are you? How are you? And have you come here today with a goal in mind? It's about eight minutes. That's enough time for everyone to have a chat. As I said, if you want to turn off sound and vision, you can. But otherwise, join the fun. Uh, Janice, when you're ready, you Zoom us through. And in the meantime, I'll keep on encouraging us that you come to exactly the right place. It's great to have you here.
great to be back. Well done. Uh, why don't we do some blurting? That'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, I, I would love, uh, maybe just the bravest amongst us might just want to shout out what's happened. Is there a thought that was said in the breakout group? I'm going to start. We had um, someone brilliant in our breakout group who has asked all the parents in their church what support do they need, got clear answers. They need support. They want support. Even went on into their availability and then put on some sessions offering that support at the time they said were most available, but they still got a very low uptake. Wow. So uh, that to me is a story of trying parent partnership and they haven't yet hit on what will work best. Amy, do you want to tell us a story from your breakout group before people feel brave? Uh, we were just basically saying a lot of hellos um, and working out where everybody was and what they were doing, but we were talking about what we thought the barriers to um, partnership were. And um, we've got going to think about that a bit more, but a lot of, I don't have kids myself, so I, it's hard to know what to say. And um, am I intimidating if I look like I'm doing a good job? All those sorts of things. Thanks, Amy. Any blurters amongst us? Go, Pete, you're putting your hand up. Go, unmute and blurt. Right, lovely. Um, can you hear me? You're totally. Lovely. Great to be here. We had, um, this might get your mouths watering, we had um, somebody offering breakfast to parents and families before church um, and and using that as a chance to, and even with a couple of volunteers lined up to, to kind of take care of the kids so that that's a chance to chat with parents. So um, croissants and bacon butties, if that doesn't do it for you, I don't know what Ooh. it does. Yeah. Um, and, I was, and if I can do a second one, very excited to have two um, people in my county in the same Zoom room. How exciting is that? <laughs> terrific. Thanks very much, Pete. Anyone else, unmute yourself. Be more like Pete. Just blurt. Tell us a discovery of thoughts. Go, blurt away. Go. Hello. Um, uh, in our group, we had quite a few parents. And I think all of us feeling like we're actually juggling with quite a lot of issues in our own homes um, ourselves. So yeah, wanting to parent with, partner with parents, but also wanting to um, kind of get that support and help ourselves to navigate some of these issues. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for blurting, Nikki. Great to have you. Anyone else want to unmute and blurt away a thought they had, a discovery they've had? Yes, Amy's inviting us to blurt through the medium of chat. Anyone else before we move on? Hi, yeah. Um, someone else had an idea in our group. It was a book club to go through your book. And I thought that was a brilliant plan. It wasn't my idea. <laughs> Anna, would you know, we're going to arrange our schedule during this session to even include that as an idea as a result of that blurting. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Last call, this is excellent. It's lovely to hear from you just because it does show that there's some that there is some conversation happening in the breakout group. Okay, great. Amy, over to you. Tell us. Hey, I've remembered. Here we go. Right, I would love to talk to you just a little bit this morning about why we do parent partnership, why we want to partner with parents, and perhaps why it's a little bit of a struggle for us. Now, obviously, no talk is complete without a visual aid, so here is my first little character. This is Nikki, the kid's worker. There she is in, in her little bag that she takes with her everywhere she goes. It's a bag of games. She's got an inflatable something that's ready to be produced. Uh, there's there's, there's a, probably a packet of sweets to give out as a prize. And there's definitely always a Bible story, a, a snack and a game in this bag. She's ready to go. There she is. She is a wonderful gift from God to the children in her church to the families in her church. There she is. We love Nikki. Nikki is a hero. Let me tell you about, dun, 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 here's Laura. Laura is a mom. She's wearing a stripy Breton dress as we do because we like to distract your eyes down from the bags under our eyes. We also know that we work very hard. So we like to dress as fishermen to remind you that we're basically manual laborers and our life is difficult. There we are. There is Laura. She is the mom. In her bag, there is always snacks. She is ready at any moment to produce snacks, probably healthy, to bring down any sort of meltdown. She is an amazing gift from God to her children 
and the other families and the other children in her church, particularly if her children are badly behaved. If her children are badly behaved, she makes church more accessible for everybody else. So next time, Laura, if I'm talking to you or every, every Laura out there, your kids are misbehaving in church, you sit back and you go, what a blessing I am to this church. I'm making it more accessible for families that might to come. These two ladies are an amazing gift from God. Also, I understand that there are blokes that lead children's ministry and our dads, but I'm just sticking with this, this illustration for now. So they are an amazing gift from God, but often they don't talk to one another. So look, oh, because dun, 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 there is a wall between them. We've got Laura on one side, we've got Nikki on the other, and the wall between them is... Basically, Laura worries that she is not doing a good enough job of being a mum. And if the kids work at her church really knew how often they managed to smash Bible times and how often she was praying and whether her house was tidy enough or clean enough, she would think she was doing a terrible job. So when she comes to talk to her after Sunday school or they're generally around, she's thinking, please don't come to my house. Please don't find out about my life because you will see that I am not smashing it. The other side of the wall is our kids worker who's thinking, I can't possibly have anything to say. I don't have kids. I can't tell her what to do. So I'm just going to basically run and hide. So I'll look after your kids and I'll smile and I'll wave at you at the end. And let's all hope it's all going well. But please don't make me talk to you because I'm scared. I can tell you about both sides of the wall because... Dun, dun, dun. I have lived both sides of the wall. I have been the person who thinks, who am I to tell anything to a mum? Because I'm not one. Let me tell you as a mum, please come and help me. Please come and help me. Please come and love my kids. Please come and ask me how I am. Please pray for me. Please say, how are you doing? What could I pray for for you and your family? Please make me not scared of you that you're going to judge me that I'm getting it wrong. Because I know that you're not. Okay, mom, she is God's gift to you. You can be her friend. You can tell her what she's doing well. You can tell her what you're finding hard. You can break down this wall between you because it's basically a wall of insecurity and we don't want it because we both need Jesus and we both love the kid in the middle. So we're going to be okay. We can work together. It's all great. Now, Ed, what I'm talking about is not just theoretical. You can hear me say all these things and say, oh, that's all well and good for you, Amy, because you look like you can start really good conversations. Wouldn't it be good if we could hear from somebody else who knows a little bit about what this like is like in practice and perhaps, perhaps has something to say? Ed, shall we do that now? I would love to introduce you to the lovely Emma, Emma Hearn, who is here this morning. Emma, can you unmute and say hello? Hello. Uh, brilliant segue, Amy. I love a good segue. <laughs> hello, Emma. Would you mind just telling us your role and where you are in the country? Yeah. Um, so my role is youth and children's worker. So kind of everything really in my kind of medium little village parish church uh, just outside Bedford. So nearish London well maybe an hour away from London for those of you who have no idea where Bedford is um I'm also a mum uh two children with additional needs um lots of additional needs in our house so it's complicated um but yeah and I love my job and Emma on a scale of one to ten of one being um awful don't ever make me do it and ten being it's totally easy I talk to parents and pray with them every week where would you say you land <laughs> oh I don't know um probably I think I move lots but maybe that's settle on a six um yeah. but sometimes I feel yeah got this and then I come up with some other great idea and no one turns up or, you know, people just go, oh, yeah, that's not really for me. And then I go back down <laughs> to maybe a one. So, Emma, can you tell me the story a little of parent partnership in your church? What you've tried, um, what's going well? Can you inspire us a little? Um, 
Yeah, so I started my role in September 19. Um, and in my interview, I kind of spoke about how it's really important that we um, added families to my job description. Um, because if we don't have families on board, then, you know, it's never going to happen. And kids are just in church for, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes a week, all of that didn't really do very much with it and then obviously March 2020 hit in and God's timing is excellent and his sense of humor is brilliant <laughs> and he obviously went come on crack on you've been doing it for enough now so we were kind of forced into it really because you know we all had to come up with creative ways didn't we and actually church was at home um so there was no more just turning up to church for a little bit and handing your kids over so you know we came up with lots of things that we were doing so we obviously did church at home resources, um, as many people did, I'm sure. Uh, we put together little packs using lots of Faith and Kids lucky books that you were producing, and we dropped them off. And we kind of had Zoom, one on one Zooms with families to pray with them and talk things through. We did reading plans, and then we did like a weekly story time where we just kind of hop in and do something kind of zoomy um and went for walks with families and were just very intentional and it was good it felt like it was you know we were making progress and parents would go oh, I never thought I could do this before and actually now I'm learning stuff and um and it's okay if my kids are you know being wild and no one is left at the table it's okay if we're doing this bible study you know in a very chaotic way that's fine that's life now so that was good. Not everything worked, but, you know, it felt like we had a real solid connection with parents um, and, yeah, trying lots of different things. Some things landed, some things didn't. Um, so we all learned a lot. And um, mm. I think it's really helpful to give us that reflection of there was that extreme. We went from from church, kind of felt the more that parents expected that church, the people that disciple my kids. Yeah. Suddenly we're, it's only us. And, and church has disappeared and parents have to do everything and we're trying to support them. Uh, we've learned some great stuff and then it all has started again. Um, have you have you been able to incorporate the sort of giving the parent partnership, giving them balancing it out that we both know what we're doing? Do you think that's do you think you've cracked it? <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> um, I feel life got busy again, didn't it? All of a sudden things appeared and I feel that we have no energy I think we've and that seems to be maybe it's just me but I feel that that's probably everyone um and we settled back into kind of familiar patterns so I think now it's trying to find where's the balance um between doing all the stuff for parents and then enabling parents to do the stuff and it's trying to find that bit um and that balance so we're working on it. Um, but I think the big thing for me is we've come to realise that actually, which is kind of what Ed was saying, until we get the parents' hearts right, until the parents are really understanding who they are, then actually partnering with parents then is just a bit of an uphill battle. So it's almost like we've got to reach the parents' hearts because if the parents understand that they are children of God, then they are living out their faith at home. And then naturally that just spills out to the children. Church doesn't just become another activity that you're doing. Actually, it is your whole life. So you put God first and then, you know, fill everything else around God rather than trying to squeeze God into a little box that just happens once a week. So it's bigger than just me you know, with my inflatables, my snacks and my random props. <laughs> um, thankfully, it's not all on me. God's in charge, but actually it's a whole church thing. Wonderful. Thank you, Emma. Uh, thank you for sharing. I think a lot of us can identify with, with the story that you've shared um, and we're all fighting for that balance. And that is why we've put this session on today and we've got tools ready for people to use. Um, one of the really helpful things about um, the book, talking about a book together is that Ed has been brave enough to put his ideas down on paper. Um, so that then we all get to hold them up in a group and talk about them and say, do we agree or not? Because if I lead the session and I tell you what I think, you're going to all be upset about upsetting me. But we can all disagree with Ed when he's not in the room because he's just in a book. Back to you, Ed. Thank you so much, Emma. I'd love to hear from people in the chat whether they feel they've noticed that before and after COVID thing. 
Uh, in the absence of actually doing a round of applause, could we? Um, you, you you can stay muted, but could you give Emma a round of applause because um, that 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 takes a level of courage. Thanks, Emma, so much for being willing to share that. We really appreciate it. <clears throat> so, uh, I uh, I did write a book, and the the reason for for writing a book was uh, that we were involved in what what came first was writing. Uh, some resources that I, I know some people in the group uh, that I'm in have been using them and have heard about them. They're called Who Am I? Seven Sessions, uh, Looking at Identity. And as we put them out, we did something with them. We, we were actually due to launch them uh, just at the beginning of lockdown. And so we didn't launch them. And instead, when we came out of lockdown, we, we did some market research, which was excellent. And we, we took what we had done and showed it to parents, church leaders, some children, and some kids leaders. And the feedback was really clear, which is, we don't want these. We don't want what you're giving us. Uh, you have been clear on what the Bible teaches. That's what we expect from faith in kids, but you haven't gone any further. So we don't want your resources. Most of our parents, most of our churches know the Bible answers on things like gender and sex and bodies and identity. What we aren't able to do is talk to our children about the issues that are coming home. So they don't say, Dad, please can you explain to me what the Bible says about gender? What they say is, a child in my class who's a boy says he wants to be a girl, Dad. What do we say about that? And they were saying they need some help in that area. So we didn't put a push out the resources. We rewrote them and went further and uh, I put on Twitter this week, definitely our feedback and conclusion has been the furthest we go, the more awkward the issues we deal with, the blunter we are with the solutions, the more positive feedback we get. So we definitely learned as an organisation, we have to be brave and we have to say some words and do some topics that no one else wants to do. And those we serve are most happy when we do that. As a result of those resources, we then realised we, we would love to say something to parents as well as just the handouts that are going home with them at the end, because it's not enough. It's not enough to leave it to a flappy bit of paper that goes home after a session that could get lost in the footwell of the car on the way home, to leave it to parents. How do we put something into the hands of parents to help them do this? Because these are the issues they're asking us for support for. So we wrote this book and Oh no, you know what the problem is? I didn't share sound. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to click the box for share sound. That'll help. Amy, just give me a thumbs up when I've worked out how to play it. As Christian parents, right. how do we equip our kids for a world that keeps changing? A world that tells them conflicting messages about who they are. A world that's different from the one we grew up in. A world we don't understand. Just when we feel like we're winning, we've worked out how to parent in this season. Oh, the cultural story we're living through changes. The goalposts shift and we're back where we started. Despairing, we shout, help, I didn't sign up for this. Parents, let's remember we are God's plan A for our kids. This new book by Ed Drew equips us to point our children to the Bible's better answers on these topics, which are neither surprising nor confusing to our Creator God. This book walks alongside us in the honest, real and laugh out loud moments of family life. It offers biblical truth to cling to and wisdom to guide us as we raise our children to live confidently, grounded in their identity in Christ. Two logos at the end, 
Ooh. Faith in Kids and the Good Book Company. Uh, the Good Book Company have been amazing in uh, helping us to explain to churches and parents what this book is about. And indeed, great praise goes to the editor because this journey was not simple. Uh, we're joined by James Burstow of the Good Book Company. James, it's an absolute joy and an honour to have you with us. Would you just unmute yourself and start blurting? Hello, uh, it's great to be here. Great to see all your faces as well. Thank you, Jude. Uh, James, will you just tell us where are you, how are you and what do you do there? Uh, I am in Epsom, where our, our UK headquarters uh, is. Uh, I'm OK. Thanks. I'm doing well. We've got some US colleagues with us this week, so it's all very kind of positive and uh, uh, high octane this week. Um, and uh, yeah, what, what was the third question? What do you do for the Good Book Company, James? Yeah. I so I'm uh, on the kind of sales and marketing end of things so I don't uh, write the books or design the books but I make sure the books get distributed and marketed and sold and into all the right places uh, and I do that for, for the UK and the US. And James do you think that fits your personality that you're mostly enthusiasm and love and not so much technicality and detail? I think you know me well Ed and I, th I think you could be yes I think you, you that's probably true. <laughs> James, we've got you in here today because um, it means you're a world leader in how to sell books, persuade <laughs> people to read them, and even perhaps work out if it's the right book for them, rather yes. than just trying to sell as many as possible. Because I know your heart, as well as our heart, is for the right people to read it, for whom it's going to be a gift to them from the Lord, rather than just to increase sales. Yeah, uh, We've asked you to come in, James, because someone already independently has said they're wondering about doing a book club in their church for this book. So, James, as if it was planned, could you tell us, give us some thoughts, some tips on getting good books into the hands of people and even helping them to work out if this is for them? Well, thanks for asking me about that, Ed. I, it's, funnily enough, I do have some thoughts. And I think my, my first and overriding thought is um, we want all parents in our churches to be able to get access to this book. And I think in any church, there are going to be some parents who are well connected. Perhaps they're on the email list, uh, in the, you know, they're, or they're following things on social media. They're going to hear about this. They're going to be keen to get it, pick it up, read it. There's going to be other parents who are not connected in the same way. And so our heart would really be to, to get this book into their hands, as well as the keen parents. Um, and so with them in mind in particular, I've, I've got three little tips, um, probably very obvious to you, but I, I think my experience is they're worth saying. Number one is be excited, be excited about this book. If you are excited about it, make sure people can tell. And if you do get an, a, an opportunity for an upfront um, announcement or something like that, um, either you do it and be as excited as you can, or if there's someone who's even more excited, is even more kind of bubbly and you know enthusiastic, get them to do it. But but get your your best person on um, promoting this book so that everybody captures the the excitement and the vision um, and they they want to to read it. Um, second thing is be relevant. I think actually the biggest barrier to people reading is time. Um, this is is not an expensive book. Um, people are more likely to not feel they have the time. They've got other things going on. They're busy. Um, but people make time for things that they're interested in and that's important to them. So if you can get across to them that this book is going to help them in some way, it's going to answer some questions they've got, it's going to, it's going to be valuable to them, they will read it. And Ed covers some massively important topics in here, identity, self-esteem, gender, sexuality, porn. Those are things that parents care about. Um, and so if you can pull those out, if you can draw those out, uh, I think every parent's going to be interested in at least one of those subjects. Um, we sometimes talk here about a head nod moment, that moment where you hear someone say something and you go, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yes, that's my family. Yes, I, I, I understand that. So things like, do you want to help your kids grow up knowing that God loves them? Yeah, definitely. Do you struggle to get around to reading the Bible together as a family? Yeah, that's us too. Could you do with some help on knowing how to answer the questions that your, your kids ask you about, about gender, about transgender? Yeah, definitely. Um, questions like that, where you can imagine the people in your church, the parents in your church going, yeah, 
Um, so rather than just holding it up, say, this is the title, um, this is what it does, you know, try and get into those, those questions so you can be really relevant and make people think, yeah, we need this, but we need to read, it's going to help us. Uh, and we believe it, it really will help them. And then the third thing is be persistent. Uh, so marketers work on the basis that you have to say things seven times before people hear your message. I think maybe in churches, it's more than that. <laughs> you have to say, they, I don't know if you've found that in your church. You tell them time and again uh, what's happening is they still don't know. They still ask you what time the thing's starting on, on Saturday morning. Um, so you, you have to tell them lots of times. Don't make this a one-off announcement and then just assume everyone's heard it. People are going to be away. People might have been out taking their child to the toilet and going to the toilet themselves. Uh, who knows? Maybe been on holiday. So, so make it in, into a, a kind of a plan. And I think if you can say to people, this is something we're doing um, this is something we're reading together. Um, this is something we can talk about as a group, as, as parents or in our home groups, whatever, wherever is the appropriate place to do it. And then the final thing with that is, I think, be directive. So, you know, is it what's the call to action? Is it buy a copy today? We've got some here. Is it bring money because we're going to have some next week? Is it go on to this website and, and buy it for yourself? Um, but tell people what to do. They like to know what to do, especially if they're busy, especially if they don't normally buy books and they don't normally read books. And again, we really want those people especially to um, pick this up. So those are my three things. Um, be, what was the first one? Be excited, be relevant, be persistent. Um, everyone likes a deal. Um, there are deals. There's a man here called Dean Faulkner. Some of you will know him. And uh, you can email Dean. Uh, his email is just dean at thegoodbook.co.uk. And if you want to buy any sort of quantity so that you can promote at your church, 10 copies, 50 copies, he will do you uh, the best deal he can. So uh, and then you can pass it on. Thank you. Yes. Dean at thegoodbook.co.uk. He would love to help you out. Um, so I hope that's helpful, Ed. Um, uh, does that does that help in any way? The people have started to ask questions. If anyone has a question oh. for James, while it, sorry, I, Jeeb is sometimes called G because of the JB in his name. So I'm struggling to stick with just James. And I apologize <laughs> if this is quite a confusing for everyone. James, uh, there's first of all the question, is there an audio book version? That is a good question. I don't think there is yet, but there is there is one coming. And I think there's, there's a bit of a groundswell of wanting Ed to actually read it himself. Who knew? Uh, it's good to find these things out. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or even top tips uh, for adding in how we do that? James, is there a straightforward way to get it to overseas? I'm based in South Africa. Well, we we have a partnership with Christian Book Discounters in South Africa. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer after launch for them to have it available, but it will be available there. Um, so I will follow up after this. Um, Hannah, you can email me if you want to. I'm just james at thegoodbook.co.uk and um, I can help you with that. Um, it might be quickest to order one copy from us in the UK and ship it down there. But in due course, there'll be lots of copies there as well. James, can you repeat your good questions that produce head nod moments, please? So... I mean, I, the, I just brainstormed these earlier, but do you want to help your kids grow up knowing that God loves them? Um, I hope they're not patronizing. I, I, I think people yeah, say yes. Do you struggle to get round to reading the Bible together as a family? Uh, that's one that constantly comes up. Um, th this is pertinent to me. Could you do with some help on knowing how to answer the questions your kids have about gender and sexuality. Um, we, we know, we know uh, one particular person who is thinking of transitioning, a friend of my daughter, she's 16. Um, that's a question she's asking. Uh, and she partly wants to know how she can, how she can talk about it. But to do that, I need to help her to know what she thinks. Uh, another one I put down actually was, do you know how to raise the issue of porn with your kids? Uh, I think all of us know that that porn is everywhere. It's quite likely if our kids are teenagers, perhaps even younger than teenagers these days, they're going to be seeing it. And um, parents don't know when when is the right, how do you broach that subject? Is it around the dinner table? Is it one-to-one -one somewhere? 
Is it on a dog walk? You know, um, these are things that Ed goes into, and they're all things that when parents hear this, like, yeah, yes, I need to know that. So that that's what I I got. You, you, I'm sure you guys could come up with with more. James, you've got the last question. Is it being published in any other languages? I promise I'm not I'm not paying people to ask these. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, it will be as well, I'm sure. We work with loads of um overseas translators and distributors. Um, Tim Thornborough and Elizabeth Parsons will be working on that, I'm sure. So I, I it will be, but it's not. I can yet. tell you <laughs> the wonder of Easter is available in French. And Meals with Jesus, I think, is heading to Norway and Sweden. So I, I find this absolutely exciting. Yeah. James, thank you very much for your time. Uh, may the Good Book Company keep on being good. It's excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, uh, Hayley, you have children in your group from Ukraine. We're, we were recently asked uh, about producing the parents part at the end in Ukrainian. It's clearly a thing. Uh, my team won't thank me for asking for help with this because that must be complicated producing parents handouts in Ukrainian. But if you are somehow a genius in this field, uh, where do we find the intro video? This is all excellent. This is all excellent questions. Uh, Laura is going to put in here the link to our one-stop, look at that, honestly, it looks like her finger was ready. The one-stop shop on our website for all of our videos uh, and where to buy the book and everything. It's, it's amazing you're asking these questions. Isn't this good? Amy, aren't they good? They are. I would also encourage you that you should follow us on social media. We have a Facebook page, an Instagram account. We have Twitter, but the Twitter one's a little bit dodgy because Ed runs that on his own. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we'll be a little bit nervous about that one. The others are definitely on message and you'll find everything you need to know. Incredibly <laughs> rude. Okay, we're going to go to a breakout group. And um, this, this is our second of three. You're doing incredibly well. And after this is going to be a break. OK, so um, what, what was the deal about? Uh, the, Dean's email is higher up the chat, Pete. So if you go up and, and the Good Book Company have made it highly predictable. So you just have to put in their first name and then at thegoodbook.co.uk. And I'm not going to suggest you stalk them, but they're all absolutely lovely. So if you find someone, you just drop them an email. James is offering willy-nilly to hear emails about how you get books to South Africa. It's incredible what they can help you with. But Dean, D-E-A-N, there you go. Look, Laura's, Laura's firing out email addresses and links like no tomorrow. And, and James says, if you email Dean, you can just ask for a deal for your church. Who knew this was a thing? So go on, bother Dean and just say however many you want, and he'll sort it out. We've discovered you can email Dean about anything. Thank you very much. It's all excellent. We're going to go to a breakout group, and the suggested two questions could be, do you have a success story of parent partnership? Do you have a success story of parent partnership? I'm going to add a second question, a third one even. Um, on, on the chat, people are talking about a lack of time and a lack of energy. So why don't you talk about that in your breakout groups? Is that what you're seeing? So rather than just another idea, the thing that won't get into people's diaries, is there a sympathetic way of helping parents who have no time and no energy? And then the third question is, what do you think about getting books into your church? Have you tried it before? What worked and what didn't? Okay, so we have got success in parent partnership, the energy and time challenge, books in your church. Thank you very much for smiling at me. You know who you are. Uh, we're going to go to our breakout group now. Janice presses the magic button. Well done. Three minutes before we take a break. Uh, we just got a moment to blurt. So uh, in the chat or live questions, thoughts, insights, complaints or just raw anger. Uh, unmute yourself uh, or type into the chat. 
We're two and a half minutes away from a break. It's a last push. Or just enjoy the quiet. Um, I'm going to blur, even though I've spoken lots. Um, but we talked um, about kind of the difference, you know, COVID and post-COVID and trying to kind of figure that out. But we then also talked about keeping it real and trying to break down that wall that Amy talked about. Um, because I think if parents don't see that actually it's okay if you're still doing the Christmas book at Easter, that's fine. Or if like us, you get halfway through and then decide that you're gonna carry on with it this Christmas, um, that's fine. And so sometimes we, we may well perceive, we can be really enthusiastic, but then perceive, people perceive that we've got it all together and actually, if we haven't in our own personal times, then that that's helpful. It's that it's like that bad behaving in church. That's helpful, isn't it? I use that picture Ed, that you posted at one point of you doing family Bible time and you've got one kid left that you're actually holding their ankle to kind of keep them on the sofa. And I use that lots to go. This is what it's like. If this is what it's like in Ed Drew's house, then it's fine if it's like that in our house. So keep it real. Thank you, Emma. I'm actually, I'll show that picture while Amy answers the question that's in the chat. Amy, how do we encourage parents to find more time for family Bible times or prayer? Uh, well, I would say anytime you say to a parent, you need to find 20 more minutes in your day to do a thing, you're just asking for a punch on the nose. Um, so what I would say is the families that are coming to you saying, we'd love to do a family devotional time, could you help us find a resource? That is a different question. If the question is, how can I make, make a connection with God in my day? It doesn't mean 20 minutes with a book open on a, on a, around a Bible study table. It means where are the key moments in our family life that we could say, wow, God, could it be at breakfast? Could it be on the walk to school? Could it be when we read a story? Could it be in the thing that we're enjoying? Could it be, could it be, could it be? You've got a whole lot more of a possibility of how can we make a God connection? How can we have a wow, God, thank you? Wow, God, help us. Wow, God, you're amazing in every day. If you can try and give that vision to a family that what we're looking for is not find a new activity for 20 minutes for to find time for in your day, where is your wow God moment? Because that's a much easier ask. And if they're coming to you to say, we'd love a devotional book, great, help them with that. You can do that. Good book company, our Faith and Kids resources. There are lots of recommendations that are coming up in the chat. I think the harder thing to do is to try and say, let's make some wild God connections in every day. Thank you, Amy. A lovely lady in our group chat just recommended praying through the Bible for your kids, Nancy Guthrie, for both kids, youth and parents. Terrific. Give gifts of resources to children or families that can be an encouragement or a blessing, especially if the parents are unlikely to buy them. Or, or maybe you just photocopy one page of a resource and you say if this is useful come back next week and I'll give you the whole book or something so to try to avoid that burden Amy is talking about thank you I find that if you encourage people to find just five minutes it might then go on longer or it might not well done absolutely uh, that's Anna I, th I think that's exactly what Amy is saying which is if you give them an appetite for the moment on the way to school where you just pray as you walk with your eyes open and they hear their children pray, maybe then they think, oh, right, they think this is normal. They're getting used to it. A number of parents in our context are experiencing relationship difficulties or pressures from work or elsewhere. They're really up against it. And how receptive can they be with that going on to take on parenting stuff? One way forward is we don't, we don't have men's ministry, but going to provide opportunities to get blokes together every couple of months relationship building. Uh, Faith and Kids are about to run dangerous camping for 350 dads and their kids in June in Kent. We're about to make those resources available online in the next two months so that other churches could do that. In other words, it's camping for dads, maybe even one night away with their kids in the middle of relationship difficulties. Could one night of camping in the middle of the summer just remind dads they've got this? That's one idea, but I totally take your point, Pete. Your point is let's not give them more to do as I've just done, but let's find out how can we bless them and how can we care for them? Great. 
we're doing really well. The, the, the chat is firing up now. Uh, thank you. I'm going to now let you, I promised you, it's 16 minutes past 11. We're going to be back at 25 past 11. Time to go to the loo, get a cup and a cup of tea and a, and a biscuit. I'll stop talking, but Amy just going to carry on for nine more minutes. Go and no, take a good break. news. I want a cup of tea. You get me. Okay. Great. <laughs> See you back at 25 past. You're doing brilliantly.
Well done. I've got my mug. Have you? Have you got a mug? Dip your coffee. Are you coffee dippers? Are you are you biscuit dippers? Sorry. Well done. Uh, <laughs> it's Christianity, uh, Ed. Christianity. Well done. Uh, we've got the people are coming in the chat. Uh, monthly prayer partners can be an informal and intimate way to walk through life together. That sounds lovely. Sarah, you could sell that to everyone. Support each other and their families in a non-intimidating way. Sarah, I'm sold on that. Thank you very much for sharing that. Lim, Lim, link to the Kent camp, please. I think I'm, it's, it's close to being full, uh, but I'm just, I'll get the link for you, uh, but there might be uh, a few places left. Laura's done it. She's, well, she can't have done it already. Of course she has. How did she do that? That's mad. Look, she's done it. Someone at uh, Pat's is new to Faith in Kids material. Is there an online material to help me to get started with the lessons? OK, brilliant. So the, the, the link that we keep on putting up is uh, for the Raising Confident Kids landing page. Uh, at the bottom of that, you'll get a link through to the Who Am I resources and the vid training videos. Uh, so I would say that would be a good place to get started. And I've noticed, Amy, that you are wearing, are we calling it a Breton dress for the training videos? I am, because I'm 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 a mum that wants to distract from my, from my face. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't know that was a Diet. thing. So so later, Amy, you can um you can help me with that. Okay. So um Pat, or drop an drop an email to info at faithinkids.org if I just haven't answered your question. And you just want more of a leg up in, in how you can get into what we're offering. Uh, it's all free to download. So uh, we just want to help. OK, uh, it's great to be back. Thank you very much. Look, to come back from a tea break and just find lots of lovely questions and people selling us amazing ways of having friendships monthly. Who wouldn't want that? It's lovely to be. It's like a, it's like a warm something. Now, uh, we are now just going to talk through some of those issues that are in the book. Uh, and I will just uh, share, I'll just go back to where we need to be. Great, great, here we are. Um, 
So uh, where we've got to is we have talked a bit about identity. We have talked a bit about this book that we've got available. And I just wanted to talk a bit about what is in that book uh, so we can explain why we think that could be useful. To start with, we're just talking about identity. I've already mentioned that I, I think the, fir the first thing I try and say often about this topic is it's not new. Um, so the, the language of identity, the topic of identity, I, I, we heard someone saying earlier on, this is a topic that parents are coming to us with. The first thing to say is take a deep breath. The Bible is not coming to identity for the first time. This is not a surprise to God that people are talking about identity. Since the very beginning, we are made in God's image. That's identity language. That's who we are. When we are saved, the language of the Bible is lost to found, sick to well, strangers, outliers to children of God. The whole way through the Bible, it's language of identity. So it's language of what has been done to us. Who does God say we are rather than us announcing we are children of God, us announcing we have moved from death to life. That picture of dead to alive in Ephesians 2, it, it, it couldn't be clearer. We, we didn't do it and we're not continuing to do it. So in families, I think this makes sense. In the Bible, it's the consistent story. So it, it's not... A faith in kids or I have got some new story to tell people we've discovered it we've made it up it's a new parenting technique uh, but apparently it's not that common in our church to be talking about it as we've put these resources out we think it's probably the first time we're explaining things to children that parents might not understand we think this is new so we are so a big a big challenge is how can we help parents to understand this is the identity God has given them and for that uh, I've also found it very helpful that, that so a book came out last year which is quite a complicated book and it's written by some sociologists uh, and it interviewed a bunch of American religious parents so the majority of them were Christians from across the whole Christian spectrum so from sort of uh, brethren to uh, Pentecostals to uh, black majority charismatic churches to ultra puritanical white churches and, and everything in between and the question was being asked by this soci these sociologists was sociologically what happens for faith to be passed on so what is happening in the religious families that means into adulthood their children continue faith the final chapter is the whiz bang one, where they tell you practically what they've discovered. I wish they'd told me that at the start. They always say that, don't they? Smart people say, read the first and the last chapter and some stuff happens in between. Listen to this quote. When families that attend religious services, even weekly, do not converse together about religious things in the time between, their children only hear religion talked about by mostly others one or two hours a week. That is like sending one's child to a weekly meeting about some foreign land where parents once lived, in which the child merely listens to others speak its foreign language. After many years of that, most children will still not be able to speak more than a few words of the language. So in London, where I am, we have this thing on Saturdays called Polish schools. A Polish school is for Polish parents who want their kids to have a bit of Poland on a Saturday morning because their kids are in English schools. So at Polish school, you learn Polish. You learn Polish history and you learn Polish geography and you learn Polish food and you learn Polish culture and clothes. And around us also, I know of French schools and I know of Norwegian schools, all on a Saturday morning, Bulgarian schools. The list is long. Because as parents, we want our kids to know something of where they've come from. But this quote is saying, if you only take your kids to Polish school for two hours a week on a Saturday morning, they won't start speaking Polish. Because it feels like you're learning about a distant land that's no longer relevant to you. This quote from this book is making the point that to be Polish, you need Polish to be happening in every crevice of your week. 
you need mum and dad to be talking to you in Polish. You need them to be expecting you to answer in Polish. And even then, if you know bilingual people, you know it's quite hard for, to get kids living in England to speak back in that foreign language. It needs to be the air they breathe. And they're saying it's like that with Christianity. Unless it's the air they breathe, unless this is what's happening in the home, in the kitchen, through the tears and in the laughter, they think it's like Latin. You know, Latin is for some clever people. It's a passing academic interest, but it's not relevant to my life now and I don't need to do it. The goal is for Christianity to be the air we breathe, relevant for everything we do. I find that a brilliant insight. And God got there first in Deuteronomy 6. When you wake up and when you lie down, when you walk along, we're talking about the things of the Lord, the glorious things he's done. We're encouraging the gospel to get into the crevices. And that, that's a stiff challenge. So it's all right for me to say this on a brief webinar. How do we get our parents talking about Christian things every crevice of the day? But this is why partnership works. It's everyone doing it together with the same goal. What a beautiful family you have. What a beautiful family you have. What a beautiful family we have. Brothers and sisters, doing it together, raising children in partnership. They've got a granddad figure who's going to teach baseball, football, cricket. They've got a big sister who's going to give them dating advice. They've got a little brother who's going to share toys. They've got some uncles and aunts who are there when mum and dad get it wrong. What a beautiful family you have. That's the vision for partnering with parents, is that we do this together. And I love the chaos. Can you stop hitting the gavel? Why are there so many children in here? This is clearly going to go wrong. We're never going to be able to control this. It's going to descend into chaos. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Every church in the country wants to have children and young people, but not many are willing to make the changes necessary. Not many are willing to adapt services, timings. Uh, my church was told last week, we're going to move our service from half four to four in the afternoon. So little ones have got more time to sleep or something. No one's gonna argue with that because we're all thinking, look, if there's someone out there with a two or three year old who needs to get back in time and we're all in for that, half an hour is gonna be fine. That's the story of church with children and young people. It's always a bit chaotic with someone hitting the gavel too many times. Can we just please leave now? This is what we're doing, which just brings me on to some of the messy bits. Uh, the reason this book got written was I had a conversation with a friend of mine called Ed Shaw. Uh, he's a minister for a uh, church in Bristol, and I'm delighted they're joining us today. He also works in an organisation called Living Out. Living Out is trying to help people work through same-sex attraction and gender dysphoria and helping churches to work out how do we welcome those people, how do we love those people, how do we pastor those people. Ed Shaw goes into churches and trains churches in how to welcome people with same-sex attraction. And everyone comes to his sessions feeling very nervous. Ed said to me, you know the thing is, Ed, I don't actually ever need to talk about same-sex attraction. I spend my whole time talking about identity. Because if a church understands that it is who they are, not what they do that defines them. All the rest looks after themselves. If a church gets their children of God, and that means people get to come in and hear about Jesus and they are not threatened, their status is not under threat. Anyone could come to church who have done anything and come from anywhere and look like anyone, they would all be welcome because they are not threatened as the people of God. There's going to be awkward conversations on the way. How do you get to be part of the gang? And when do you start to play in the band? And who can teach kids the Bible? But we're the children of God. Other people can come on, take a look and understand what that's going to mean. He said, I spend all of my time doing that. He said, you know what we need, Ed, is we need children to learn this. We need children to get that Christianity is about identity. Because if we do that, then our churches will become a whole heap more healthy as churches know what it is to welcome other people who are different to them. I found that hugely helpful. And, in, and we, started, we started this whole piece of work from that conversation. Uh, that, that, that it's about identity. Now, in these topics, we've tried to mention sexuality. We've tried to mention gender. In fact, we've tried, we've, we've tried to mention the hardest parts. I was at a parenting seminar recently talking about these issues. And someone said, why has no one ever mentioned masturbation? And I said, it's in the book. 
because someone else said to me, it's never in a book. So it's in the book and you can buy the book and find out. But just to run through two of those issues in not enough minutes, the issue of gender, uh, it's been very helpful for me to record podcasts with experts and to hear people feeding back. I was scared of this topic, but it's not hard at all. In three points, which clearly I could spend a lot longer and people have written very big, big books on it. But just to say at a level maybe we need right now just to reassure us. First of all, it's biologically simple. For those like me who didn't concentrate anywhere near enough in biology lessons, on our podcast, I say out loud, is it true? Every cell of our body has a gender. They looked at me and sort of shook their head. Yes, it is. Every cell of our bodies are either male or female. It's biologically simple. It's the headline of Genesis 1. God created us in his image. Next sentence, he made us male and female. It's absolutely the headline of who we are. It's biologically simple. It's pastorally clear. It's pastorally clear that boys have freedom in how they're boys and girls have freedom in how they're girls. In the Bible, there are women who lead God's army into battle and there are men who write poetry and songs. There is freedom in Christianity for boys to play rough games or to write poetry. And there is freedom for girls to climb up tre trees, get sore knees or love frilly dresses. It's entirely up to them. It's biologically simple, it's pastorally clear. It's culturally awkward. It's culturally very complicated for us. I heard about a uh, Christian dad who, who sat down with his kids over a meal. They're aged 13 to 17. And he said, tell me the percentage of the country that has gender dysphoria, that want to be the opposite gender. 13 to 17 years old, the answers were between 20 and 50 percent, the guesses. Three teenagers said there's between 20 and 50 percent of the country that want to be the other gender. Wow. Now, we all know the figure is actually less than 0.1 percent, but our teenagers are hearing so much about it, they assume it's massive. So that means our parents need to be equipped to have culturally difficult conversations. And I try and reassure parents, everything you do, there's going to be a garbled version that ends up going around the school playground. I do remember the dad who was terrified once his three daughters had seen him naked in the shower, what conversations would happen at school now. But that can happen about anything. It can happen about this, but there's grace. There's grace. It's culturally awkward. That's gender in not enough minutes. Biologically simple, pastorally clear, culturally it's difficult. That's why we're there for parents. Sexuality in equally not enough time. Firstly, I've learned we avoid early labels. We avoid early labels. A child of eight does not need to know if they're bisexual, gay or a lesbian. A child of 13 doesn't need to know that. In fact, it's not helpful for them to announce to everyone what they think they are. Because we're told by people who know stuff that it's generally a bit of a wobbly journey on the way to adulthood as we try and work these things through, as we suffer from friendships falling out, as we get hurt by people, as we break up, it fluctuates. So there's huge wisdom in talking to the, the few people in your life who love you the most, parents, youth leaders, kids leaders, about these things who don't talk to everyone else about it, we avoid early labels. We focus on friendship. The Bible is clear, to be human is to have friends. Everyone needs friends. Everyone needs friends they can trust to have intimate relationships with, as well as passing laughter on the way. Everyone needs friends. Not everyone needs to be married. Not everyone needs to have sex to be human. Let's help our kids know the supreme value of friendship. It's at the heart of humanity. And how will they make these decisions about sexuality? I think for myself, personally, if it was left to me, I would not have done the Christian sexual ethic. It's not how I'd have done it. The argument, if you love someone, you should be able to be with them, is quite compelling. This is one of those topics where our children have to work out how will they make decisions? Will they listen to their own heart? 
as I'm tempted to do? Will they listen to culture as I'm tempted to do because I want to be popular? Or will they listen to God even when they find it hard to understand and disagree? There aren't many of those moments in life where we have to decide which of those three it's going to be. This is one of them, which means it's helpful. It's helpful to be talking about it. So just on passing, uh, when the editor and I, Carl, talked about these chapters, they all got put at the end into chapters seven, eight and nine. Those are the awkward chapters. Uh, it might be if, when you if you did this as a church, it might be you don't wait to seven, eight and nine to get there. You might say we're going to cover them at the beginning. In other words, those are the pages everyone's going to turn to first. So it could be that those are the pages you want to talk about first. But they're all in there. Uh, we are writing more Sunday school resources at the moment. Uh, we're doing a second phase at the moment to try and go further. So we've got that identity series we've talked about, seven sessions. At the moment, we're trying to write because we discovered when we fed back, the leaders said we're finding this very difficult. The leaders' feedback of our trial was saying the word sexuality, gay, saying the words transgender, gender dysphoria, gender identity, this is difficult. So we tried to make it, we just get mentioned in these, these sessions that are online now. And we're going to try and go a bit further for older kids with the next session. So with over eight, we're going to try to go further into those issues like bodies, sex, pornography, images, sexuality, gender. We're going to try and go further and we hope that's launched in January. Uh, we were in the run in home. Uh, the link for where you can get these resources, we've put it up repeatedly. I think you've got it now. It's on our website uh, to find out where the training videos are for the resources, but also where you can get the book. Take a deep breath. Uh, Amy, uh, can you, while people are just processing that, before we go into a breakout group, uh, and while people type questions into the chat, could you just uh, tell us what might be some next steps, Amy? How do we just un uncork our heads and work this through? Okay. Well done, everybody. Um, I, I'm going to use a church analogy that we're probably all familiar with. It feels like we've been at a church lunch, a potluck supper, a buffet table. There's been a lot of stuff on the table. We've been looking after other people. We've been answering questions. We don't actually know what we ate ourselves. Um, we just, there was just stuff happening and we picked some, up, some stuff up. I want to take you back over what we've covered. I want to help you know that it, you have picked more up. You've eaten more than you know. You don't need to have a big dinner when you get home. We started off thinking about parent partnership, why it matters. Um, and we have understood that there are barriers to us wanting to partner with parents and that we want to sit down because we're all on the same team. We all want to love the kids in our lives. We can smash down those barriers of insecurity. Um, and one of the big reasons we want to help parents is because we understand that the world that their kids are growing up in is, is different. The challenges that facing culture are huge. And that's why we've been talking a lot about identity today. That's why our identity resources exist. That's why Ed has written a book. We want to try and equip parents with stuff that they feel overwhelmed by. And you guys, as the kids' leaders, as the ones who have their back in churches, are going to help them. Um, I'd remind you that Jeeb told you some really excellent pieces of advice. Well, Ed started us off with the good news. <laughs> Jeeb told us some excellent pieces of advice about being excited, about being relevant, about being persistent. Um, we heard from Emma, and Emma told us the story of You're Not Alone, and what you've been through in COVID being tough and it being all parents, all us, how do we hit this balance right? What could we do? What ideas do we have? I'm just going to go back to Emma because I cut her off deliberately in our little chat earlier because I was saving this for later. Emma, could you share with us one of your solutions, one of the things that you are going to do with parents? Um, yeah, so one of the things we're hoping to do probably September time when people have got new energy, it's like a little mini new year, isn't it, in September, um, is we're going to use the book, um, Ed's book, because it's awesome. Um, and we're just trying to meet parents where we're, where they're at. You know, life is busy. Um, actually, they want to spend time with their kids. Um, babysitters are scarce. So we're aiming to do some kind of brunch, probably monthly, um, where we all come together so we connect um, 
hopefully maybe now I'm stealing the the prayer kind of partnership idea as well so I think you might do that as well um, and then someone hopefully will take the children away entertain them play a game out in the garden do something and then we'll just spend a little bit of time working through some of the helpful questions at the end of each chapter in the book um, and go from there um, but doing it all together I'm hoping that we get parents with kids of all ages because you never stop being a parent um, I'm hoping we get people there who aren't parents um, but want to walk alongside um, it takes a church to bring up a Christian um, so that's the kind of vision I can be excited because I am excited so hopefully you know check back <laughs> at Christmas as to how we've got on but that's my plan lovely thank you Emma that takes us on to that lovely picture that Ed's just given us remember the gavel the messy family we're all in the same place there's big things to talk about gender and sexuality and we can do it because God has given us one another. I just want to say an encouraging word um, to those of you who are working with families where there's perhaps only one of the parents is a Christian. Um, for those of you who uh, you've got the young people and the kids involved in church and you haven't necessarily got the parents. And so you're working out how do we partner with parents when they don't even come? We've got the young people. Um, life is messy. Life is difficult. Life can be broken. God's plan that we've talked about today and the way that God has constructed families, um, that you know, there are parents and children, there are parents at home talking to their children about their faith and living it out in front of them. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, it does mean we want to celebrate it when it does. It does mean we want to encourage it when it does. But we believe in a God who does the incredible, who puts broken people in families, in the families of the church, who makes new families, who finds replacement mom and dads for those who need them, and sometimes that can be formal in um, adoption settings like it has been in, in our life. But sometimes that can be informal. You might be the, the substitute brother or sister. You might be the grandparent in your church family for kids that are coming along. God does incredible things um, and God saves and God works. And you're a part of a wonderful picture of big brothers and big sisters in his family. Everybody gets into God's family by adoption. Um, no, no kids are born in we're all adopted in and we all get to be brothers and sisters in the end i'm done ed sorry sorry i um, i was going to finish problem. you you were you were looking like you were going to pause no um, yeah. <laughs> so the last thing i was going to say was when you're feeling overwhelmed about the number of things that you've got to do and the number of questions that you've now come away with that's okay You've got the Lord's help to work that through. You've got other people in your church to talk to. You've got friends to talk to. You've also got our website, faithinkids.org, busting with resources that we're literally here to try and encourage you and help you. Before you, you've got this. Thanks, Amy. There are two questions I'll just say a word on. What age do you think it's okay to be mentioning these kinds of words? This this is I think the most often asked question, the question I tell parents in answer is, didn't you find yourself talking about this when your kids were two or three in the bathtub? Uh, if you have two kids, did they not point at each other's bodies and ask why they're different? So I, I wanna reassure parents, what we're talking about is the normal thing that's happening in their homes all the time. It's not helpful to think of it being one big conversation and to give them milestones for when they must happen. I do then mention that half of kids have seen pornography by the age of 11. So I say, well, wouldn't it be great if our kids were ready for that rather than just assuming our kids will be in the other half? Wouldn't it be great for us to be talking about unhelpful pictures and helpful pictures and what to do when we see unhelpful pictures rather than using the word even pornography? So I would wanna reassure parents, it happens slowly and it could happen normally and it might be they go a bit quicker than they feel comfortable going, but they're the right people to find this difficult. Any advice on how we help or deal with the issue of parents who disagree with the Bible's teaching and aren't keen for their kids to hear it? Well done. Amy, say one sentence on that as you just typed in an answer. I was just saying it's a great question. It's um, a good thing to, that we want to be honest and open about. Uh, we are talking about a Christian worldview. We are talking about um, what we believe God says and um, not everybody believes and not everybody shares of you and we can be respectful of that 
Um, at the same time, we want to confidently present what we believe is good news and what we believe leads to flourishing for your children. Um, so we actually believe that in a heavenly father who loves them and wants good for them. So that's why we want to share what he has to say. Beautiful, Amy. Thank you very much. Uh, I would just love to say before we go on um, that I did mention that all of our resources are available for free. Uh, the, the books are the, uh, are the only exception, and that's because it's a publishing company and it's only fair that James gets a salary at some point in his life. Uh, all of our resources are free to download. We don't know if that's going to be possible forever, but it is for the moment because people keep being generous. Uh, if you download some of these resources, you'll see it takes about eight people to produce the Who Am I series. Uh, we would love more people to be giving to make that possible. We'd be love more people to be giving to make the next series possible that will come out in January. Uh, we have put to our trustees a budget for the next year starting in September uh, that has a significant uh, six figure hole in it. Uh, which that's not happened before in our history of five and a half years. Uh, but the Lord has provided smaller holes than that by people being generous. So uh, maybe you would consider giving uh, three pounds a month, five pounds a month, 20 pounds a month. There's a link that's gone into the web, that's gone into the chat. Uh, we're trying to do more. Uh, we think in the next three months we'll be recruiting at least two more people and we have someone new starting in June. Because what we're really clear on is the need is huge. Uh, we didn't have a plan to be a team of eight when we started five and a half years ago. We, we didn't think we'd need to be and we didn't think we'd even survive that long. But the feedback and the generosity of Christians uh, has meant we have grown and our goals are bigger and we're trying to be brave in what we produce. And we are thrilled you're all here. If, uh, if you could be part of us carrying on, and maybe even growing. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. There's a link there. Please do consider giving. Thank you very much for letting me ask. We're now gonna go to our breakout groups. Uh, this is the last time. So I think the obvious question is, is there one thought to take away? Is there one thought? Is there one next step? Uh, most of us can only implement one next step at a time. So one thought, and the thought could be a question. You don't have to leave here with it done. Is there a thought or question to take away? Is there a next step? They could be the same thing. We're going to go to one last breakout group. We're nearly home and hosed. Well done. Well, for the last time, we have an opportunity to blurt. So while people come in, uh, the, the chat is open. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself uh, and, to, and to blurt away. Do you leave with questions? What confusion do you leave with? I promise I won't try and answer them. You just get to say what they are, uh, unless you've actually got a question. Uh, and then uh, a, th a next step or a thought. Does anyone just want to blurt? Moments of inspiration. Don't ask permission. Off you go. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. We were, we were saying in our group that actually that identity that's really solid as a Christian, the lost to found, the dead to alive, is really clear if you become a Christian older, but many of the children in our churches became have kind of slid into the kingdom. Um, and that identity change, there's not a kind of date. You know, their parents have talked about Jesus ever since they were little. They've kind of grown up in the family of God. They've, how, like, do you just... Any, any tips on how to make them sure that their identity is in Christ, even though they haven't had that moment of transition? Mm. I, I would say first, I mean, we can we can be teaching it, but I would actually argue that it's it's we're trying to avoid the opposite, which is constantly, constantly finishing every Sunday school lesson with a neat thing to do this week to show we've understood and we're doing it. So I, I would actually say. Those people in this room, we're the ones who influence Sunday school leaders. 
for us to be always thinking, <laughs> how is what we're teaching set our hearts on fire? How is it told us something to know and to remember? And trying to avoid, what should we do? Uh, how do we prove we, we're doing it? I think that's where it comes from. I, I'm running a small group of um, 17 and 18 year old boys. And I do notice how much they, they have grown up in church and they believe and speak of Christianity as if it's essentially a sort of middle-aged pastime for people who don't have much fun in their lives rather than the better story, the flourishing, the adventure. So I, I think we, we just, I think, I think what our kids hear loudest is what should I do? And they're normally churchy things like prayer and Bible. I think if we can try to be constantly applying what we teach to the adventure of life, to how it changes our thinking, our tears or our laughter or our friendship, which I think that's what identity does actually. But I also want to say, Nikki, this isn't easy. It isn't easy. Anyone else just want to blurt a thought, an insight, a moment of wisdom, a next step? Two things from um, my church and something I learned from another church. Um, parents want to know what we're going to teach their kids. So I'm thinking I need to get them together this term and talk to them if I'm going to do the Who Am I series in September so that they're not blindsided. Um, and another church said to me that they produced all your leaflets together for the Who Am I series into a booklet and gave it to the parents at the start of the series, which is definitely an idea I'm going to nick. Um, then it's in the booklet, you've put it in their hands, it's not a bit of paper that they've lost, or you've emailed it to them even better, I guess, then they've got a digital copy with maybe the dates that we're going to cover each thing, and then they're prepped in advance for what's coming. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Anyone else just want to blurt before we move on? Amy's getting excited about Ko's comment. No? Okay, Amy. You're going to persuade us all to do something as a favour for Faith in Kids. Tell us what that is. Well, would you like to have excellent training that is at the right time and at the right place for you? Would you like to have the right number of uh, frequency of big day out trainings a year? Well, we would love to know what would be helpful for you. So what we're going to do now is because if we send you a thing afterwards, you're all going to forget about it. We are going to live together, fill in, fill in a Google form. Yes, people. So it's in the chat. It's not difficult. It shouldn't take us very long. And that means that we can serve you better with what you would like, what you want more of and what you need. So if you click on the link that is helpfully now in the chat, you it will take you Three minutes if you if you're if you're yeah if you're as technologically able as me, and probably one and a half if you're guy, the lovely guy who comes to all our big day outs and is just always puts links in the chat. And I think he's great. Uh, so there you go, off you go. You can do it. I could We're literally asking you to do it now. Now, yeah, now. So now. don't wait. Click, click on it now and Amy will talk for four minutes while you well, do it. I About think people that. struggle to fill in forms while there's people talking. Okay, in that case, we find some tinkly music, Amy, Let's to play find them. tinkly music. Janice, why don't you share the video and the tinkly music on the video will be I love Claire. Voice. Claire from My Word Alive History is, is looking, she's reading in the forms. Don't, don't start naming people you love, Amy. <laughs> she's filling in the form. I love lots of people on this call. <laughs> yeah, that's helping. That's helping. If the chat is just the chat is just disappearing, you can find it. The link is still there. The link is still there. Disappeared now. The video. Yeah, now the videos come on. The form is still the form there. Is still there. If you go to the if chat, you go to the chat. Click on the chat. Click on the chat at the bottom. The link 
is there. The link is there. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Love Neil. Love Neil. More seconds, more seconds. You're still, Amy, how pleased are you that people have filled that in? It's very exciting. It, I'm very grateful. I, I should have said you didn't have to worry too much about the email addressing, but I'm hoping you figured it out anyway. Thank you. Well done. I think we even took that out, Amy, so that people could just get on with it and not fear that we'd be knocking on their door for, for something more. So if you're still filling the form, well done. Amy and I are now just going to talk slowly and we'll get progressively more important. So you don't have to listen to us for the moment. Uh, I just wanted to mention that one thing uh, you may not know about us is we produce podcasts uh, and uh, you can find out about those with everything else on the page you've now really almost learned by heart, which is the Faith in Kids uh, landing page for raising confident kids. Uh, I just wanted to mention that we run two types of podcasts for parents. This is the way most parents find us for the first time. Uh, we run one which is Faith in Kids for Kids. And on our Raising Confident Kids, you'll find our kids' podcasts on these identity topics. This is number three of seven on I Am Hurting. So these are 20 minutes to listen to in the car when you're driving at 70 miles an hour and your children can't leave, a bit of the Bible, some funniness, some sketches, and a question for each age group so that if parents are finding it hard to open the Bible, we can do it for them. And a question for each child. Uh, we also have one, a podcast stream for parents. The last one we have put out is this one, which is very relevant to the topics we've been talking about today. So although we do have podcasts on all of the issues around identity, this happens to be the one we did last, which is with Patricia Wirakun, who is an 80 year old grandmother who lives in Sydney, who trained in Hawaii and was born in Sri Lanka. And she says some words that makes Amy blush. And Amy did brilliantly to hold it together because normally Amy struggles with that sort of social awkwardness. Uh, and in that podcast, we've had, we've had rave reviews for that podcast. And in the chat now, goodness, I've, I've got the link to that particular podcast while well, everyone is wondering how to get that everyone okay there so if you want to find that podcast you can find it there uh, but you can find everything on our website if you look hard enough uh, we are going to be making the recording of this available on youtube feedback is always welcome so if you just wanted to drop us an email info at faithinkids.org 
than you could. The movie clip I showed you is not available anywhere on YouTube. So uh, I, I'm suspecting it's going to be part of the recording of this one. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get in trouble with a monster movie company from America. Uh, but you just can't find it on YouTube. So I got that clip sent from a friend. Goodness, I shouldn't admit to that on YouTube. So sorry. I don't know where you can get it from otherwise. I'll stop, stop talking. talking. Stop. Of, I've done that. Uh, we, are, we are pretty much done and we're early. So the only thing left is for me to say thank you for filling in the form. Thank you for joining us. Uh, YouTube for the video. We're going to send you an email with an edited version of the chat. I'm going to take a deep breath and then Amy will pray for us as our heads are probably full. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you for the truth that holds us fast, no matter what we're facing and no matter what struggles come our way or however we might feel overwhelmed by the ministry situation that we're, that we're facing. Thank you that we have a Heavenly Father. I thank you that we are your children. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you want good for us. I thank you that you have promised to help. I thank you that you want um, good for families and for children. I pray that you will help us to remember how good the story is that we know, um, how good you are, and the, the wisdom that you offer, uh, the wisdom that you offer and the love that you offer and the better story that you offer to the children and families in, in our communities. Father, we pray that you will help us to equip parents uh, to live out this better story uh, in a confusing culture. We pray for our children, young people. We pray for your protection of them. We pray that they would come to a saving knowledge of your great love for them, that they would trust you as the father who wants good for them, and that they would walk wisely in a tough world. For your son's glory, help us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome to leave. Amy and I will sigh deeply for a few minutes longer here, if that helps. No, Ed, everyone wants to do the Zoom wave. Okay, Laura is posting a blog of the top tips from today. How's Laura going to do that? There is a blog coming out. So it depends what kind of learner you are. You might want to watch it in double speed on YouTube. You might want a summary in a blog. You might want to check out our Instagram page stories, whereas some people have asked, Amy, would you share your drawings? More fool you, may I say. <laughs> Those drawings will be in Instagram stories later. Whatever kind of learner you are, there will be a way for you to catch up and review today. Please stop recording, Janice. Everyone has had enough.